Oh, hey. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Another episode, another day of on the road with Iona and chasing the red. And today, we're in a little mini and we've got our first ever guest on the channel in the form of our four-legged friend, Gilas. Come on, Gij. Here she is. Absolutely loves it on the golf course. And she's gonna be following us out today at Highgate Golf Club, aren't you, Gij? Unfortunately, I had my car stolen. And in my car, at the time, because I was at a golf club, my clubs were stolen too. And I'm in the process of getting some of them back. But in the meantime, I've decided to crack open this little bad boy, which I find on eBay, courtesy of my friend John, who's a bit of a persimmon expert. He advised me that this was a nice little persimmon. I've not actually had the chance to play with this persimmon yet. So it's a titleist persimmon. As you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's not a laminate, which, which is sometimes when you see with the layering, um, the sort of layers of wood. They're not quite as good when it comes to persimmon woods. This is a solid head. We've got these metal plates and this metal face insert, which is where you get the expression, I caught it out the screws, because there is actually screws in the face of this driver. It's tiny. I mean, it's absolutely teeny tiny. It looks like a modern day hybrid kind of club. But today, it's going to be my driver. And I have played with persimmons before, a couple of times actually, and I find I hit it really nicely and it gets a much lower ball flight, a lot less spin. And if you get it chasing, it can, it can play quite nicely. So I'm intrigued to see how we go with it today. I'm not sure. hitting at 162. Whoa. It comes out low and it chases. It's a really tough call this. And I think for like, I think for like entertainment value, people will love it. But in terms of trying to put a score together, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. I feel like Sevy with one of these, you know, where he goes like, <laughs> I don't know, that could work, because I reckon that's probably going to chase out to two, 210, yeah. I think. It's decision time with this. this is this the, the decision maker, the shot? Yeah, let's make this the decision maker. If I catch this out the screws, we're going to take the titleist persimmon onto the golf course to try and chase the red. If I don't catch it out the screws, I'm going back to my old driver. straight out the screws. <laughs> a little bit bottomy, but that is gone straight as a die and it's carried over 200, no, sorry, total over 200 yards. That's all I need, Ollie, let's go. That's let's it. go. Right. Hole number one at Highgate with the persimmon wood. Place from an elevated tee down into a valley. And I'm just looking to try and hit this somewhere on the club face, to be honest. Pretty good. It's just over by that bunker on the right. Into the bunker. See how much that released? Yeah. So it can be really fun. Yeah. Because you get it, you get it rolling and it releases like a thief with a handbag. Or a thief with my damn car. <laughs> so in the fairway bunker down the right half of the first hole. Flying nicely. 76 yards up the hill, probably playing more like 80. And yeah, these bunkers look lovely, really nice. The trick with this one is I've got to catch it nice and clean. When I was taught to play out fairway bunkers, you're trying to hit that clean shot, ball first, stand second, is to keep your height. Imagine that you've got a string coming out the top of your head and you can't zip as you, as you hit the shot. Got it nice and clean, but it's gone a bit left. <laughs> all right, it's up there. It's worth saying that I'm like my driver, all my clubs are gone at the moment. So I'm playing with my old set of irons and my old wedges and a putter that I, that I haven't played with in a long time as well. So 
it's quite an interesting experience, just not the feels that I'm used to, but uh, it's still good equipment that I used to use in the past, so hopefully we'll get it right. Come on, Julius. Right, this is horrible. Down slope towards a sloping green from back to front, pin all the way down. I mean, I'm not going near that pin really, I'm gonna go left of it. And I've got my old 60 degree here. You can see these wedges had the raw finish. That's where they rust naturally, which I love. And actually, apart from looking cool, it, when it's a sunny day, unlike today, it prevents the glare from the sun shining back in your face when you put the, the wedge down on the ground. How many times do you get blinded by your own wedge? And with this raw finish, you don't get that so much, which is really cool. But this has got a different grind on it. This is an A grind. And the grind that I've been using is a T grind, which is designed for kind of, well, a shallower angle of attack for firm surfaces like Lynx Golf, which I play a lot of. That's the T grind. So this is back to the A grind, which I had a bit shaved on the, off the back for those tighter kind of surfaces. Not that today is like that, but I do have a shallow angle of attack when it comes to my short game. I was always taught when you're playing off a down slope to take as much loft as you can. Stop, 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 stop. I think we could be on for a bit of a cricket score here today. Right. So this is the putter, it's beautiful putter, Scotty Cameron, um, similar in style to my beautiful Terillium, it's that sort of blade shape and I'm very grateful that I've got it today. These greens, oh my gosh, what about these greens, they are so pure, Ooh. I don't know when the last time I saw greens like this, this is seriously impressive and I saw from that chip shot just how quick they are so this is going to be this is going to be very quick but we're going back up the hill so I need a bit of hit in it I think it's definitely going to be off the right it's just so weird when you don't have your own equipment it's like even this grip feels different oh, I've slammed that break oh ho 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 did you see that break? That really came off. I thought I'd, I thought I'd hit that a mile past, but now I've left myself just a hideous little slider from left to right down the hill for a bogey. Whew, okay, that's all right. A five at Highgate to start the day, having found the fairway bunker. Not bad, but this round with the persimmon wood is going to be very, very interesting and hopefully quite entertaining for you. Second hole, 318 yards, par four, stroke index nine. It looks quite straight, but we're going back up a massive hill, which is going to be difficult for my persimmon because it's probably just going to pitch into the slope. Let's see it a bit higher and see if that helps me launch it a bit higher. Oh, flush. Get over that bunker. Yes. Ho -ho, ho -ho. <laughs> With the persimmon, loving that. Okay, as you can see, I've snuck it past the bunkers down the right hand side and I'm in the first cut. The rough here at Highgate's not too penal, so that's great, good news for me. And I've got 128 yards out of flying lie. I've got my pitching wedge. Or just go straight at the flag. Go. Oh yes, it's a beautiful shot. This is the light. Out on the golf course with my dog, walking to a birdie putt on the second green at Highgate. <sighs> these are the good days. These greens, I cannot tell you. I think these are probably some of the best greens I've seen all year. And I'm talking on the DP World Tour, on the PGA Tour. These are like Augusta-like. There's not a blade out of place. I've never seen anything like it. Literally, like, 
perfectly cut, beautifully short and totally even. There's no patchiness or humpy bumpiness. Amazing. Knew it. Knew I'd leaked that. That hurts. That really hurts. Oh dear. Alright. I'm so mad. <laughs> Sit. Good girl. Wait. Gilas. Wait. Gilas. Wait. Third hole. Looks like a pretty straight par four again, kind of through this alley of trees, which is beautiful. And I'm just going to try and thread a little persimmon down there. Gilas, wait. <laughs> Oh yes, stay. So third hole, hit my persimmon down the right and everything feeds from left to right anyway. So I've ended up down this sort of right half on the rough, 141 yards left. I think I might get away with this persimmon today because it's a shorter golf course off the whites, which I'm playing. It's a par 69 and it plays it's just around 6,000 yards. Ball way below my feet here, so I'm expecting it to kind of leak from left to right. There is the fade. Sit. Yeah. Hmm. Back of the green. Bit of a flying lie, but okay. Well, this is a very interesting green complex. You can see it kind of bowls in the middle and it all falls away to the front again. I've learnt my lesson of just how quick these greens are. I can feel actually that second shot was playing a bit downwind now. Going with the flat stick. Break now. Sit now. Okay. Right, I'm going to hold this, Ollie. Mm -hmm. Yes! Whew! Okay. Par. Can we just say how unbelievably sweet Jillas is right now? She's just sitting by the green, taking it all in. You good girl. <laughs> you are. Right, the fourth hole is a beautiful little par three, playing 122 yards today off the white. The flag looks like it's in the middle, so I've got my pitching wedge. Good. <laughs> Happy. Wait. Right, find the middle of the green and a little bit of an uphill putt here for Birdie, which is great. I'd say this is left edge. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> and I'm not going to have any spike marks, just Mwah. birdie at the fourth, first birdie of the day. Beautiful. Back to level par. I'm pretty happy, Ollie. Are you surprised? Uh, a little bit. No, never. <laughs> are you going to talk us through these shoes, by the way? Yeah, these shoes are fresh out of the box this morning. And I actually designed these golf shoes on my Joy website. You can see they're covered in grass. but my joy where you can like go and make your own golf shoes and this is what I came up with. You know I love my navy, I'm a navy kind of gal. I decided to stray away from blue. Every bit of me wanted to design a blue pair of golf shoes or at least a blue stripe but I went for a nice green. That's probably going to divide a few football fans out there but I'm saying nothing. I'm saying absolutely nothing. 333 yards, par 4, stroke index 11. It looks pretty straight again. Yeah. It's a blind tee shot, but from the looks of things, it's straight straight over the hill. So with this persimmon, I'm just teeing it. You know, you feel like you want to tee it right down, but I'm teeing it a couple of inches off the ground. And then when I swing it, it's taking a bit more time because it's a slightly longer shaft than what I'm used to. Yeah, there you go. Blah. The thieves can keep my driver. I'm keeping this one in the bag. This is unbelievable. When you hit this out the middle, boy oh boy does it feel good. So rewarding. You 
sitting nicely in the fairway. Front flag, plenty of space behind it. And I've got 92 yards. Another good look at birdie here. Truly, I, I'm not seeing a lot in this. I think it's straight at it. Oh, it moved. Fell off the right. A knee knocker. It's got to be left edge now, coming back. Good hole. On to the sixth. We've got par four, stroke index one. I was looking down this hole, I was thinking, surely this is a par five, but it's stroke index one, so that makes sense. Six hole, 464 yards. Gonna need a nice one of these. Getting the hang of this with this persimmon. It's all about rhythm, timing. Down the right again, but it's okay. Long way to go. Could have really done with finding the fairway there. 240 yards left. I mean, this is just about leaving a number now. So I want to leave myself 92 because I've just hit 92. So I know exactly how that feels. I'll just take a little bit off that. 150 yard shot. It's going to hit us a uh, grip down seven iron. It's narrow fairway as well. So just find the short stuff. Hold the fairway. Okay, I've run through the fairway, but hopefully I've got l roughly that number. Amazing views. First time I've seen the glimpse of the city all across London, walking down the sixth. That is gorgeous. City golf at its best, this. So you see how narrow it gets here. I think quite a smart decision. You're coming out the rough with a long, long way to go. Now it's all about seeing if I can get up and down. You know, putting this pitch shot somewhere inside 10 feet Give myself a chance. Oh, so I've not done so well there. I've got 82 yards, so I'm 10 yards out. <laughs> Still, I've got a gauge. At least I've got a marker, you know. Just gone left again. Okay, outside chance. Okay, it's gotta be like outside the right for sure. <laughs> oh god, that feels really good. A par. Really tough hole. A par feels like a birdie, no doubt about it. That was sweet. Really, really sweet. Right, first par five of the day, the seventh hole. 491 yards. Downhill, stroke index seven. Beautiful tee shot, this. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Down the right half again. Ah, I just can't stop that. Come here. Look, this is especially for you. Especially for you. Sit. Gently. Good girl. Is that yummy? Gobbles. <laughs> right. Okay, good girl. If you're good, you'll get another one. 253 yards. Lots of little acorns around here. So I've got a little hybrid that I can hopefully get it chasing. Go on. That's up there. I've just left myself a beautiful little chip and run opportunity. A little bit left to right on this. Oh, a lot of left to right. I needed to start that way left. Stop ball. That is unbelievable. Just down the breeze. Green running away from me. Simple chip and run shot. And I've, that is useless. That is absolutely useless. Such a simple shot. And just lapse of concentration, not thinking that through. Right, we're back up the slope. 
drained a few putts today, so I don't know, we could be we could be heating up here. I think I'm just on the green there and no more. Interesting putt this one, a bit of right to left and a bit of left to right. I think I'm gonna take this at the hole again. Straight at the hole. Pushed it. Part. Oh my teeth. I know, it wasn't very good. It wasn't very good. Right, this is gonna be a struggle, this hole. The ninth hole back up the hill. As you can see, I'm looking at a massive cliff in front of me here and it's 190 yards roughly to get to the top of it i don't think i'm carrying this persimmon i have no idea how far i'm carrying it but it releases so much i think i'm probably carrying it about 160 170 so i don't know if i'm actually going to be able to get this up the hill this is going to be hard go yeah yeah I think it might have fallen down the left side of the hill. 227 yards up the hill. I didn't quite get my drive up to that plateau and now this is all sorts of horrible. Right, ball way above my feet. Such a long way to go here. Go. Okay, 53. Up and down struggle again that's the challenge whenever I whenever I'm struggling for my par on a par four just try and think to myself right this is the challenge can I get up and down here the thing about the shot in is you've just got to give yourself a chance you've got to give yourself a putt even if it's a 10 foot 12 foot just don't be greedy go Bogey, back to one over par at the turn. Baby. <laughs> hey. You're sitting a bit funny. Nice. Nice. This is an honesty bar. It's so muggy here today in London. It's, it's so hot. It, it's really close heat because we've had this sort of storms passing through. I'm desperate for a drink. There you go, Ollie. <laughs> Thanks. Huh? Have you ever worked in a bar? Um, I've worked in a fish restaurant, yeah. Yeah. yeah I was the I was the hostess, so I used to greet people as they came into the restaurant. It was a restaurant in Edinburgh. And yeah, I worked there for many a week, many a month, maybe about a year, like right. just kind of in my uni days. One of my best jobs I ever had was a secret shopper. When I was at uni, I used to go and do the shopping where it, it was like you went and bought dangerous things like fireworks and knives. You went to the betting shop and they'd pay you to go and do the shopping and then you'd have to tell them if you got ID'd. So it's a 20, if you look 21 and under kind of thing. It was a cool job. So you've got plenty of knives and fireworks at home. I do, I've got the best kitchen knife set you've ever seen. <laughs> right, tenth tea, one over par. These views are just gorgeous. Little oasis, huh? Yeah. So close to London. We're just four miles from Marble Arch. And Amazing. Yeah. It's just like perfect kind of city golf. Right, we're into the back nine. Beautiful drive down the left-hand side of the tent. I've left myself 108 yards, but it's playing way downhill and downwind. It's like a 90-yard shot that I need here. I've got this old 52 in the bag today. It's just, it just feels so weird. I feel like what I'm used to. I've got to feel like I really hold the face off through the strike. Okay, that's such a tricky little shot that. It's run onto the middle of the green, but these three massive bunkers that defend it, it's, yeah, it's treacherous. Let's hole apart, back up the hill. Into the breeze, right to left. Break, break, break. Ah, oh, keep your pace. Okay. Okay. 
beautiful par three, 210 yards from the back, down the breeze, down the hill, a 190 shot. Quite a strong breeze picking up now, which I love. Off the right, kind of helping here. I'm gonna hit my five iron, because I think if I land this, 190 would be the flag, but if I land it at the front of these greens, it's gonna chase, because it's quite firm around here. Even though we had some of that rain this morning, it's definitely releasing really, really nicely. Come on then, Breeze. It's coming in, go on. Look at this chase, Ollie. What about this? Hey, <laughs> stop now. Stop. Yeah, unbelievable the way that swung round. Part for birdie, coming up. Jeez, oh, she's got a bit of a sad face. <laughs> baby, baby. Hello, my bubba. Hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. Good girl. Come on. <laughs> so obviously Gilas is out on the golf course with me today. Gilas is a Gaelic name for faithful one. My family have always had Gaelic names when it comes to dogs. We've got Gilly, who's our five-year-old. We've got Gilas and we've got Lass, which is spelled L-A-S, and it's also a Gaelic word for flame. So Scottish roots. Scottish dogs and I think it's great to have the dogs on the golf course when you're in a relaxed environment. Obviously if you're playing a tournament it's it's not going to help your score I don't think. It makes you feel good, you feel happy which is always going to help but if you're out for a casual round you know today she's very very well behaved and it's just me playing so I can focus on my golf not worry too much about her. If I had someone else here I'd probably be a bit more distracted because I she'd want to say hi to them all the time and I'd want to make sure that, that everyone's okay so it can be a bit distracting but golf and dogs I think go hand in hand and it's really nice when you can enjoy both together but some people understandably worry about dogs making a mess on the golf course and you've got to pick up after your dog that is the number one rule just on the fringe through the back of the green Left to right putt for birdie. I'm gonna leave the flag in. Come on. That was actually a bit clumsy. I played that a bit firm. I was getting a bit greedy there. Now I've left myself a bit of work to do for my par. So, so so, so clumsy, a three putt from nowhere. It can happen. We've made it to the 12th, par four, 233 yards, but all the way uphill, so it plays a hell of a lot longer than that. Working a little fade back. Oh no, it's clipped the tree. Clip the tree down the left, so I'm gonna have a long shot in. <laughs> Tell you what, it's a golf course that'll keep you fit. A lot of steep hills. Good for the old ticker. Okay, 76 yards. Wind off my back, so it's gonna push it from left to right. That looks pretty good actually. That could be close. Right, birdie, putt. Here we go. This should be a brilliant bounce back. Come on, baby. That's what it's all about. Just taking the next opportunity. No point in getting too pissed off with yourself for too long because there's always another chance just around the corner. Easy for me to say, I know, after I've just held a putt, but great little hole. I imagine that most people take their driver out or even a three wood with the big hitters and just give this green a crack and it's stroke index 18, so you can see why. And I'm pleased, we've got a birdie. Come on, back to one over par. <laughs> Babe, we made a birdie, we made a birdie. We made a birdie, you can wag your tail. <laughs> She's not fast. Right, back into a stiff headwind. This is a really tough hole, 13. Par four, stroke index four. 
quite a nice wide fairway but with three massive bunkers down the right. Probably my drive of the day, that one. Go on. Chase. A fairway. Yes. A fairway. 111 yards. That is the drive of the day so far with the persimmon. I really caught that nicely. Left myself 111 yards. Perfect little 48 degree. Maybe actually just a little drip down pitching wedge. Back into the breeze, straight into it. Yeah, a little low one. Ho ho, that's money. Big moment coming up here. Putt that looks makeable to get back to level par. That would be very good at this stage in the game. Come on, always get your pitch marks, folks. Especially on greens. As good as this. Birdie time, birdie time. We're back to level par. Walking to the 14th tee. Sun's coming out. It wasn't very nice earlier on, but look at this now, isn't this gorgeous? <sighs> the spirits are high. Okay, 14th tee, 369 yards. Par four, stroke index 10, super narrow. There's trees down the left that are cutting over like you wouldn't believe. I think to be honest at Highgate, it was a good choice of courses to bring out the persimmon. Not that I chose it, but it's a good day to have the persimmon because it's super narrow. It's not that long, so I'm not really... I don't know how many times I would have hit my driver realistically. I definitely would have taken it many times, but, but not off every tee, that's for sure. And you're not losing a lot by, by being a shorter hitter, which of course I am, with my persimmon. So it's kind of working out all right at the moment, but this is this is a tough one. I'm going to have to move this a little bit from right to left to make sure I avoid those bunkers. Hold on. Just heading to the bunkers. Just short of the bunkers, okay? That's not a problem. The card's looking pretty good right now. We were at two over at one stage. Now I'm back to level and. Graham's told me very kindly these greens here that slope away from me and this is one of them and I've got 170 yards down the breeze so this is a really tough shot coming up playing 175 up the hill but take off 10 165 160 shot and he said you've got to land it in front of the green so I think 155 is probably probably a good number it's my seven iron right you've got to stay away from these trees I've clubbed up to the six because I'm going to try and cut the ball from left to right. That's going to take a little bit off it. Oh no, it's in the bunker. <sighs> bunker time. Right, this is a really tough shot. Long bunker shot, just need to land this front of the green, left of the flag, let it release. Go on. Oh, what a soft kick. Not a lot of sand in there, that particular spot. This would be a good one to hold, wouldn't it? Yeah. Big swinging from left to right. Go on. Go on. Oh! Cannot believe it. So close. Yeah. She drops a shot back to one over par. So close. Lip out. Awful. There. That. Stroke index two. What a beautiful hole. 15, 442 yards. It's a long, long way. Beautiful alleyway of trees. This is just spectacular. Nice. Wow. Okay, so I've had a really nice kick off this bank down into a flat portion, but I've still got 195 yards left, which up a huge hill is 
playing more like two, ten. I've got I've got an old wood in the bag here. Twenty one degree. I think that's what I'm missing most today in my own set of golf clubs is my three wood. I think that would have been a really useful club. I would have hit that off a lot of tees and I can shape my three wood really nicely. Go. Go on. All right, it's just about creeped up there. Just to the left of the green here on 15 and I'm trying to get up and down or even better, try and get a birdie get this in the hole. Go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Not quite. These are the parts sometimes, just these three, four footers that keep the score together. And as tempting as it is just to walk up and wrap them in, you've just got to take your time. Three holes to go. What can we do? Can we break into the red? So three holes to go, can I break back into the red? This is a big ask because it's a really tough finish. Graham said at the start of the day, the general manager here, that this is a tough finish and I can see why. This is a wonderful hole, but it all kicks from left to right. Two massive cranes in the distance. One thing that's going in my favor is the fact it's downwind. So nice little drive to set us off. Yes. Perfect. Go on. <laughs> My swing just feels so different with this club. It's like, I'm like, <laughs> I feel like I'm like falling back on it, trying to get my hands to turn. Long way to go. 231 yards, she was Sitting nicely. Down the breeze. I think my rescue is probably the club. Just need to get it over the top of that second hill. Go on. What a golf shot. Hmm. Could be the shot of the day, that one. Brilliant. To get home at this long par four in two, I'm pretty happy with that with a persimmon and a hybrid. And this is gonna be a very intriguing pot. Huge big camber here in the middle. It's gonna swing from right to left. And then it's gonna race down to the flag. I'm gonna to have to send this up here somewhere. <sighs> Straight down the breeze, this is gnarly. trying to tickle it to the top of the slope. Go on. Easy, easy. Yeah, not bad. Gotta keep your head so still on those ones. That's the best tip I have for holding four footers. Keep the head still. 152 yards. 17 penultimate hole, par three, 155 yards. Down the hill down the breeze. I've got my eight iron. Come on, baby. Be the club. Oh, it's a bit short. Release. Not bad. Putt for birdie at least. Here we are with a putt on 17 to get back to level par. That will give me a chance to break into the red going up the last. This is really important. It's a tricky one because it's just going to fall off the left, but the greens have been so pure all day. And it gives you a lot of confidence when they're this good because you can hit it on the line and just know that it's going to roll out. It's a cup outside the left. Go on, baby. Break. Then break. Hit it exactly where I wanted just didn't move. So many of these putts have been a bit straighter, I think. It's absolutely gutting. Absolutely gutting. I'm really sad. I've got to hold this one. That keeps me one over going down the last. So I'd have to eagle it to break into the red, but a birdie would get me back to level. Oh, such a good putt as well. 18th at Highgate. It's been an absolutely brilliant day. 
This is a par four stroke index 10, 325 yards. And I've got to birdie this to get back to level par, eagle it to break into the red. Looks like it, it just moves a little bit round to the right. So I'm just going to try and hit my persimmon, which has been good company today, right down the middle. Oh, yes. So good when you catch it right. I'm loving playing with this club and it's interesting to go back to such a smaller head. You know, there's a lot of chat right now about changing the technology in the golf world. Will it be the ball? Will it be something else? Personally, I think it would be nice to see the driver head shrink a little bit and keep the ball the same, but everyone has their own opinion. So with that in mind, what's your opinion? Leave a comment in the boxes below. Please, please, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel so I can keep making more videos like this one. Thanks. Okay, this is, this is a lovely finishing hole. Yeah. 127, okay, up the hill. Playing 135. It's a small, small eight. Just shows you with golf. I've just hit the eight iron, just shy of 155. Now it's 127 going up the hill but back into the breeze, and I'm using the same club. So, but I'm, I'm going to grip down it a little bit. There's no room to be short here on this final beautiful, beautiful hole. Little gallery watching as well. Makes me nervous. <laughs> Come on, wind. Move it. So that ended up. Is it okay? No sign. That's not good. No clap, <laughs> nothing. Crikey. <sighs> Wonderful view from this 18th green. It's just stunning. This part to get back to level par. If you're watching, please say a little prayer for me. Break. Perfect for pace. <sighs> but not to be. I'll tap this in. And there we have it. A four at the last. Highgate Golf Club with a persimmon driver. I shot one over par. I'm not in the red, but it's been a great day. Huge thank you to Graham and the team here for letting me come and play. And if you've made it this far in the video, a huge thank you to you. Please don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode. Oh, this is so weird now because it's like some thief has had his hands on this. It's kind of like quite eerie. But this is my this is my beauty. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. So we've just finished playing with a persimmon and my, my clubs have been returned to me. This is my putter. I was so, so scared about losing this. And here she is back with me again. Let's see what else is in here. Driver, the woods, my new irons. These are my T T100s. I just put them in the bag and then they just got nicked, but now they're back with me again. My wedges. And look at this, this has got Julius's name engraved on it. Spelt with a D. Who knows what I would have shot if I had my own clubs. <laughs>